I come lifting this waiting congregation to you. They've come with expectation, they've come with needs. I'm insufficient. I'm not even worthy to stand before you when your the splendor of your glory is revealed. But I want you to prepare me. Lord, let me clothe myself in you and let all my insufficiency be hid in you. I open my mouth that you will fill it. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to your people. I cannot utter a word except you speak to and through me. Lord, I pray that you will clothe me. Clothe me to stand against the very darks of the wicked and the arrows of the enemy. Equip me, Lord, I will speak by divine utterance. None of me and all of you. Let your fire saturate me and sanctify me from the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet. And take away every doubt and unbelief and worry. Everything that we serve as a hindrance to your word and to this prayer. I pray, Lord, that you will look down and you will do something you've never done before. And that your people will say, indeed, we are heard from the Lord. Give them listening ears and break every stony heart. Father, we pray that heart be transformed into heart of flesh and your word will go for. With those I see and those that I do not see, may your word impact our lives. And I will give you all of the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Uh, to be here, uh, I was not prepared for this. But in the military, when you take off, you have to show up. And so we have shown up because we believe there is duty that is calling here. We believe that God always has a plan. Because in Jeremiah chapter 29, 29, 11, say, I know my thoughts towards you. Thought of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. And not expect to end. So God always have a plan for his people. No matter how many times we try, we drift out of God's plan, God stays in his plan. He stays within the confine of his plan. Because there is nowhere where God ceases to exist as God. And so this afternoon while we are sitting, I believe our minds are pondering over situations and how we will find solutions to our many problems. We've come with words of hope and encouragement to let you know that what is with what is not in the ability and the wisdom and the capability of men to do. It lies within the confines of God and his ability to do anything including the impossible. Or maybe I'm going too much around. What and where man has reached and said this is my limit this is the limit of my strength. I've lost all my strength. I've lost all the wisdom. I've lost all the avenue I've tried to pursue. And I cannot do anything else. Then comes a power. A power that is mightier than any other power. A power that is beyond the power of any being. 
that exists is known as the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, because he cannot be limited, nor can he be to a particular place and be absent at another place. He is omnipresent because he is always everywhere at all times. Am I speaking to somebody here? He's omniscient because there is nothing that he cannot do. And so I've come to speak to you because most times we find ourselves in a position where our present problems seem to overwhelm us. And we are overwhelmed to the point that we think that our present problem uh, as here come with all kinds in our shapes and form uh, it seems to be swallowing us and we seem to be drowning in the ocean of problems and situations but I want to let you know that your present problem including mine does not negate the presence of God nor does it indicate the absence of God because God said I will not never leave you, nor forsake you. And most times, we find ourselves where when we are faced with situation, we become oblivious to the fact that God is always there, waiting and ready to find solution. So nothing is impossible with God. You see, the for you to know the ability and capability and wisdom and the power that God has, it means that a long life's journey you must take God with you. I want you to tell somebody, you too cold in this place. Say, I don't know who's on your journey. Tell somebody, tell somebody, say, I don't know who's on your journey, friend. I want to know, I don't know, they're not hearing me. I want you to tell somebody, say, I don't know who's on your journey. I don't know who's walking with you. I don't know who you are depending on. I don't know who you are listening to. I don't know who you are following. I don't know who you are walking with. But whatever you do, I want you to take God with you on the journey. Oh, tell somebody, say, I don't care who you take on this journey. Just make sure God is on the journey. Am I speaking to somebody here? Say, make sure God is on the journey. Because the person you take it along the journey will let you down. Tell somebody, speak to me. Say, the person you take it along the journey may let you down. The person you take it along the journey may fail you. The person you take it along the journey may not follow you to the end. The person you take it along the journey may not provide for you what you have. The person you take it along the journey may not counsel you right. But there is somebody who says what he means and who means what he says. There is somebody who does not just start a journey, but he ends the journey. There is somebody who will not lie to you. He said, I'm not made that you lie. Man, by the son of man, that you repent. My father said, I can make it good. He said, I have a move. Because life will reach you to a place of impossibility. Life will reach you to a place of human limitation. Life will reach you to a place where you have many questions and few answers. Life will reach you to a place where human ability and strength will not be able to carry you through. And, and that's what David knew. He said, yeah, though, I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear not evil, for thou art with me. That rod and the staff will come for me. Amen. 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 That's a word. It's because of this. 
God. Matthew decided to pin the scripture in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Let's flow. If somebody in the booth, look at the top of your voice. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm taking God with me. I can hear you, somebody. Say, I'm taking God with me. I must say, Jesus saw and he told his disciples that it would be hard. It would be hard for a rich man to go to heaven. There was this this question as to if as to whether a rich man would enter heaven. And the disciples were they were perplexed. Uh, they were troubled so much so by the sayings that they said, but then it's impossible for men to be saved. And so it caught Jesus' attention. And he decided to address the situation of impossibility. Let me tell you something. Jesus' attention can only be drawn to where men reach their limitation. You're not hearing me right. I said when men reach their limitation and men recognize that they have reached their limitation, they, they must be able to be able to tap into a higher energy. Let me tell you, when you're using the cell phone and the cell phone starts to lose power and you find out that it come to 10%, it come to 4%, it come to 2%, you must look for a higher power. That maybe you will be able to connect your cell phone into because you need recharging. If you have somebody, you do not wait for it to get dead, you plug it into the outlet so it can give you more juice, or you plug it into the power bank because there's a reserve power. Somebody said reserve power. A reserve power that you need to be transferred from where it is reserved to your cell phone. Now, what became impossible for the cell phone to recharge yourself? It became possible because there's a reserve power. So, the disciples said, then it's impossible for men to be saved. And they called Jesus' attention. And Jesus looked at them and said to them, You see, Jesus was specific as to who he was talking to. He said to them, Well, men, it's impossible. But there is a scripture that I like. It said, Well, men, it's impossible, but not with God. So in other words, taking men with you is a physical addition. But taking God with you is a double addition in that is physical and is spiritual because when the physical he has the hearts of kings in his hands with the spiritual he will open mountain and you will walk through because he's caught nothing can hold you spiritually because you become a spirit when the physical thing stands before you and you are able to pass through the physical realm he gives you favor it's not discerned it's not because you're smart it's not because you're educated it's not because you're wise it's not because you're righteous it's not because you're faithful it's not because you can read the word but favor will come when God says favor favor will come whether you deserve it or not favor will come favor is not fair but favor is deserved the Bible didn't say God is fair the Bible said God is just and God knows the just hallelujah somebody can somebody get God hallelujah praise And so Jesus said to his disciples, with men, this is impossible. With men, 
This is impossible. What is your impossibility? What is your impossibility? You say, when men this. So identify your impossibility. And identify that impossibility will kind of propel your mind oh, and prepare your mind to activate that thing that is able to transform your impossibility into possibility because he said this. What is this? What is this that you are carrying that is impossible with men? There must be something that you are carrying that is impossible with men. You say with men this is impossible. Anytime you have a situation that has not yet reached to a place of becoming impossible with men, that means man has the solution. It's because of that that when Lazarus was placed in the tomb, God knew the limitation of man. So God said, roll away the stone. Men could do that. But this is why men could not do it. For to allow Lazarus to come forth, men would not have done so. God knew the limitation of men, so when they rolled away the stone, they would have entered there and they had a, and they had a power and ability they did not. They rolled away the stone and they went back. And that is a word. Don't try to do for God what God can do for you. If you reach to a place of impossibility, leave the impossibility part with God. And so they were wise enough to say, we know how to roll away the stone because we roll it on it. We know how to take it out because we put it on. But the coming out is left with God. I am speaking to somebody. Leave that impossible thing with God. They've got solely God only you can bring Lazarus up. We are dependent on you. You told us to roll away the stone. We feel it with our part. Only you can do your part. And Jesus stood and said, there's a way. God will always look for a way in order to perform his miracle. God will always look for an avenue in order to perform a miracle. He said the door is open. And I, God, will call her. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says Lazarus started to come forth. He did not do it because of him. He did it because of them. He said, I am able to raise up the thing that is dead and stench. Not because it's smelling in your nose. Me, God, is not able to raise it up. Oh, no, 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 no. And look at somebody sleeping here. Not because your problem smells. It means that God lacks the ability to raise it up and make it not smell. You see, let me tell you something. Lazarus, these are the words of Martha and Mary, the sisters. They said, Lord, he been here long enough. He's smelling now. Oh, that was the way he smells. I believe when they open the tomb, they said the scent is coming up. But when the king of glory, the God of possibility, decided to speak up to that stink situation, that massive situation, that situation that seemed hopeless, when he said, Lazarus, I heard the matters that was eating him decided, they started to receive and go back to the place. I saw the water that will pour you on the land. 
because I saw the power. Nothing. I just God word said nothing. 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 And Lazarus, the high. You see, the, 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 the power of God is so much so. The Bible says when the Lord comes and the trumpet is sound, they were the dead. I've never heard dead men hear, but the dead men hear when Jesus called. I want to let somebody know today, God is hearing your problem. If I were you, I would shout hallelujah. God is hearing your situation. If I were you, I would shout hallelujah. God is hearing you right now. I don't care how hopeless your situation is. I don't care how terrible it is. God is hearing you right now. If I were you, I would stand on my feet and shout aloud. Lazarus got up and he said, where am I? I can see, I can see, where's the door? No. When Jesus spoke, he spoke John chapter 14 verse 6 in Lazarus' ears. So when Lazarus heard the voice of the Lord, and this is what he heard Jesus say, I am the way. I am the truth. No man coming to the Father but by me. So he said, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth. Then he said, then that means that Jesus is the one leading the way. Let me tell you something. Your situation as dead as it will be look, when it arise, it will arise in God. When it arise, God will take the glory. I want you in the house with me. I want to let somebody know that situation when it arise, it will arise with God be glorified. Lazarus got up and he knew the door. But he was blind from head to toe. And guess what? He arrived straight in front of Jesus. What did he arrive somewhere else? You are divinely placed. Oh my God. Somebody, somebody hear the word of God. I say you are divinely placed. Your situation has just come to make you stronger. Because you are on your way to a greater level. If I were you, I would shout out hallelujah more than that. Hallelujah, somebody. Let me tell you something. Nothing else is impossible with God. There's a story I want to tell you. One man died. Read the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The man, I believe, he tried to pray. He tried that he would be healed of his sickness, and he did not, and he died. And when he died, they decided to go bury him. You know, they come to book out of burial. They say when you die, you ought to be buried for one of the two, if you're not insurance. Out of a state of a shame. One of the two, out of the family shame, they will bury you, or they want you to smell. The bury somewhere burial will take place. And this man died in the word of God. If you go my day home where you will find it, they died. And he died and they were taking his body to be buried. They were taking his body and people were crying. Because this man chose to live, but death struck him and they were taking his body to be buried. When they were taking his body to be buried, there was a cry of war. The enemies decided to attack Israel. At the time of this man's funeral procession, let me tell you something. Sometimes trouble can come down and they can trip up. Man died by crazy. While they were taking this man to be buried, there was a war in Israel attack. And they had this man rushing with his body to be buried. But the war was so fierce to the point that men could not afford to find a grave and leave this man honorably. And they decided to throw him. Yes, sir. 
this man's body was thrown. When the body landed, it landed on Elisha's grave. Oh man. You will not miss destiny in Jesus. Name. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you. I'm speaking to somebody. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you, you shall not miss destiny in Jesus' name. The Lord said, I'm going to tell somebody. You will not miss destiny in Jesus' name. Even when you are flung, you will not miss destiny in Jesus' name. If I were you, I would shout out, Hallelujah! And through this man's body mm -hmm. because of war. Guess what? At the time they threw his body, Elijah's grave was open. They think what is impossible with men is possible with God. Elijah's grave, for my reason, I don't know. But Elijah's grave was open. Mm. And the body, maybe I was going to be shot Leonard. But I think I may pray so too many prayers before he died. Maybe I want to be shot Leonard, but because of generational attachment. Mm. Oh, the body went, when they threw it, they tell the body, I was going to fight war. That body came and it landed on top of. Uh, Elijah's grave and it penetrated and it landed on top of Elijah's bone and the word of God said the power somebody say power somebody say power the Bible says the power from Elijah's bone when that dead man landed he could not behold the power and he stood up alive alive the man of a throne Elijah's bone uh, stood up alive uh, and said, I'm going uh, to live again. Uh, there's some power. Uh, the time was impossible. The time was dead. The time was finished. Uh, but what became possible with them is possible with God. God decided to use a dead man to make me alive again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Elisha's bones raised. Why? Why? Because when that man labor, he was specific. Lord, I need, when the request was asked, he said, I need a double portion of the anointing. That means otherwise, even while dead, let my bone get life. Yeah. It shall be a portion. Even while dead, uh -huh. let my bone get life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Even while dead. Yeah. 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 That was the word. Yeah. He said, I just don't want to operate uh, in the physical realm, uh, in the realm of the spirit. Uh, when I'm with you, uh, if somebody touch my grave, uh, let it be healed. Uh, In the round, nothing is impossible Amen. with God. Amen. Nothing. Matthew 17 20. Matthew 17 20. I believe you say you can go. And Jesus said to them, You always begin to them. He said to them, The reason why you are not receiving what you should receive is because of your unbelief. Me, in other words, your situation has overwhelmed you to the point you don't think I can do it again. And that was Sarah Rich. When she refused to hear the voice of God and hide the voice of reasoning, and she said to herself, My age has shown me that I cannot bring forth your animal. And I will recommend somebody younger to bring forth seed. We cannot die without a seed. She decided to take 
on the voice of reasoning and when the child was born God kept silent until Ishmael was born and he was presented and the Lord said this is not the promise God will never change his mind concerning you I don't care you can be 100 years old I don't care you can be you can, be, you can reach your monopause if God said you will deliver you will deliver I don't care if you don't have a womb God is able to provide the womb I don't care if something wrong with your Philippian tube God is able to give you new tube I don't care what wrong with your eternal system nothing is impossible with God am I speaking to somebody here nothing is impossible with God 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 somebody shout hallelujah Nothing. He said, For I can show you that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say, You will say, Not all. He said, You will say to that situation, G location. He said, You will say to that situation, G location. Move from here to there. Let me tell you something. I don't care whatever barrenness you are faced with, mm -hmm. whether it be financial, physical, spiritual, mm -hmm. and under the sound of my voice, there shall be no barrenness in this land. Amen. Oh, I, I want to let you know, I don't care what barrenness you are faced with, yeah. whether physical, whatever barrenness, under the sound of my voice, there shall be no barrenness in this land. I said there shall be no barrenness in the land. I want you to take authority by standing on your feet and, and, and possessing it. You may not want child, but you may want to, you may, you may want status, you may want financing. Whatever it is, under the sound of my voice, but virtue of the fact that I'm called by God, there shall be no barren. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you. There shall be no barren in this land. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. There shall, he said, tell them. Tell them there shall be no barren in this land. No barren. I don't know what barren that you are faced with. But the Lord said, I should tell you. There shall be no barren in this land. There shall be no barren in the land. But virtue of the fact that God has spoken, the spirit of barrenness that will open Ready here, we command it to live in Jesus' name. Amen. I can live in Jesus' name. I can live in Jesus' name. I can live in Jesus' name. I tell you, I'm gonna be 